Now that we got the roof raised, let's talk about what it takes to get this project done. We're gonna go through money, we're gonna go through time, and we're gonna go through tools. Listen to my little buddy Steven as he tells you what to do next. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. started on this project we want to lay a quick foundation of our background skills it doesn't mean you need to have the same background and by no means are we professional bus builders but we have had a wood and metal fab business and been involved in the trades most of our lives so when we look at the bus it is definitely going to be a challenging project but it isn't one of our most challenging projects or isn't the most challenging project so don't be intimidated by it our goal is to bring awareness to what skills it takes. So if you start this project on your own, you can get through it. Or if you hire a professional, you have a little more awareness as to what they're gonna be doing to your bus and what you may wanna spend. So our roof raise was a 16 inch raise. We did a slope transition between the first and second rib. Uh, we relocated the door from up front to about a third of the way back. And we deleted the school bus windows and put in some RV windows. The goal with this video is to break the roof raise into a few phases and within each phase we'll talk about the tools and skills as well as the cost. At the end we're going to pull it all together with the total cost of the project but definitely go back and watch the other videos that detail out the roof raise and the framing as well as the sheet metal of this entire project. So before we could even get started raising the roof we needed a few tools. One of which was a nice long level. But you're going to need basic hand tools. You're going to need things like a cordless drill, a sawzall, an angle grinder. You're going to need a pneumatic hammer and an air compressor. We used both a punch bit and a shearing bit, a chisel, for getting rid of rivets. The other big thing in this project is you are going to need a welder because you're going to have to make the actual brackets to raise the roof. That's these things. Let's talk about cost. We made four of these, all totaled $225. You're gonna need some four by four blocks, but you can probably find scrap, that's what we did. And then we needed to get a bottle jack. Uh, so this was $40. So all totaled, we had $264 out of our pocket before we even started any work on the actual raising of the roof. So with the roof raise, it's time to jack it up. So this is the bottle jack I talked about buying in the first section. We chose the bottle jack because this will lift straight up, whereas the mechanics floor jack lifts at an angle. In addition to this, which we already counted in the cost, I had to have two four x four beams that were eight foot each. We cut them down, but that's another $16 to add to the cost. Then came time to weld in the hat channel. These hats, you can see they have two different sheens. This is galvanized, a great material, but not for this project. This is galvanil. Same corrosion properties as the galvanized, but it's paintable. So we chose to use these hats and we custom made them. But the 14 gauge steel that we used, as well as our time, turns out to be about $15 per hat. So if we're looking at the total cost of hat channels, $540, we used 36 of them. Now it came time to do the transition. For the transition, we used two 24 sticks of one and a quarter 14 gauge square tubing. So two sticks, 26 bucks a stick, $52 added to the total cost of the project windows and doors so we use six sticks of 14 gauge two by two square tubing so a little bigger tubing that we use for this 39 dollars a stick i said six of them chalk up another 234 bucks in addition to the frames each window got a gusset now carla drew these up to fit our specific windows and we had them cut 
at a local sheet metal place because we don't have a plasma cutter here. So looking at what I think we used, let me look at my sheet. 32 of them, they're eighth inch. It was actually $2.50 each for these. That's another $80 added to the project. Before we could start the sheet metal, we had to prime and paint all the raw steel. Now we weren't as worried about the galvanil. Remember I said it's corrosion resistant, but we used six cans of your regular primer paint combo. Definitely want paint, not just primer. That's six cans, five bucks a can, another 30 bucks, right on to the total of the project. For the windows, we were able to salvage most of them. We had to buy the driver and passenger window because we will have a passenger seat. These windows were $145 each, $290. Again, added to the total cost of this roof raise. Our doors, we had a plain slab, a commercial slab, 155 bucks, $50 for the hardware. There's 205 bucks. The last thing we'll add to this section is I framed in the back. I used one stick of one by two rectangular tubing, a little bit different. I believe the sheet, the stick of this for 24 foot was $38. All totaled, getting the roof raised, we had $1,485 in that part of the project, bringing our running total to $1,749. We were right on target with where we thought we'd be. So getting the galvanil steel professionally cut at 18 gauge sheets, we have $1,170 invested in that. That is the biggest single cost of this project. But again, we may have gotten it cheaper if it wasn't cut by a pro, but I would not do it any other way unless I had a shear at my house big enough to cut full sheets. So we got here two rivet guns. So we got both of these rivet guns. I tried this one first. This was the $70 model that is capable of doing quarter inch rivets, which is what we used for the bus. This thing only made it about a quarter of the way through the project before it died. It may not be a bad product, but we went right back to Harbor Freight and bought the upgraded one. This thing worked so much better. Not only did it last longer, but the actual function was great. It's designed for quarter inch rivet. It fits a few different sizes. Now I don't have the tail piece on this just for storage, but do not operate this without a tail piece on because it will send the shaft of the rivet flying far. So we're gonna consider for this project, $150 for this gun. I am eating the cost of this gun. I may take it back or I may give it to someone who thinks they can fix it and they're looking for one. So another expense was Cicaflex. And Cicaflex was recommended to me by another builder but it is a great product. Um, I will take it out of the gun and show you. I also recommend buying a good caulking gun. Your hand will thank you. And this gun was $17. You can get them for three or four bucks. Well worth it. I would buy another one for a project like this because this stuff is very, very heavy. The Sega Flex 252, it worked great for us. We went through eight. I think they were $22 each which adds $176 to the project, but we really trust this product. So the next thing are my Clico pliers and Clicos. And we've showed you a little bit about how they work. So I'll tell you these pliers and an assortment of Clicos, we use mostly the quarter inch ones because that's the size of the rivets we were using. Um, we have $119 invested in that. So we're gonna go ahead and add a whole $119 right to the project for those. Now, if you've watched our videos, you're gonna see our backyard metal break. Definitely go back, it is when we do the sheet metal to the back. We actually show you how we use um, some PVC pipe and bend the metal around that pipe to get the contour of the bus in the back. Big fat zero. We only use materials that we had laying around the shop. Now we use things like butyl tape, uh, three rolls of it for putting around the window part, nine bucks a tube, $27 total in butyl tape. And we even wanna think about like the poster board, right? So anytime you're doing a project, consider the small things. We have $8 invested in poster board for templating the transition. 
which means in the sheet metal process, we have $2,031 invested in just the sheet metal. Most of that came from the sheet metal itself. Bring our project total at this point to $3,780. But wait, there's more. We always forget certain things. I know I'm like the OxyClean guy. Um, you got to think about some things like when you're welding, you got to think about your consumables. Anytime you're in a shop, you got to think about drill bits, cutoff wheels, um, flopper discs, sawzall blades. Uh, we use random bolts and stuff. So all that stuff you kind of have to sometimes guess at. We bought probably more than we needed, but we had a minimum of $150 invested into that, which brings really the roof raise total to $3,930. That's what we spent. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Look through the materials list. If there's anything you think we missed, let us know. Definitely go in, subscribe to the channel, click the notification button. In the next video, we're gonna go through more tips and tricks of what we learned doing our first roof raise. So hopefully that'll set you up for more success. Enjoy the journey and work hard at your bus.